What's up guys, it's Joseph from My Gamers Reviews here, and I'm bringing you another budget deck. This is my Royal Paladin Galahad budget deck that I just made recently. I gave it a few deck tests against my Angel Feather and my Narakami deck. Those two are also kinda budgety. Um, the Angel Feather deck runs perfect guards, the Narakami deck doesn't run perfect guards. So they're, they're both pretty budgety in my opinion, so I ran it up against my other two budget decks. So this deck isn't a, isn't a deck that's extremely competitive, it's more of something, you know, to have fun with, play around with, you know, if you have some cards lying around, or, you know, you just want to play around with Royal Paladins for fun. There's, some, there's a lot of cards that you can still use in here, and some cards you can think about putting into an actual competitive deck. So let's get started with the build. Okay, so we have Drangal, the starting vanguard. We're using four heal triggers. Four stand triggers, four crit, four draw. Okay, so we're running rainbow triggers in this. Normally, you guys always see me with, you know, eight crits, the four draws, the four heals. Uh, apparently, Alabaster Owl, I can't find any online for sale, and apparently nobody at my locals has any that they that they're willing to uh, sell. So I had to put in the four um, Silent Sage uh, Sharon. Uh, well, it's still good to have her because she's a 10k uh, shield, and she can also be put into the soul for a boost, like uh, Margul can, so you can get the counter blast for Galahad or, you know, uh, Soul Saver Dragon, and power up uh, lots of other rear guards in this deck. So I said, you know what, why don't we put Sharon in, you know, worst comes to worst, we're going to use the four stand triggers, it's whatever. It's... Again, this is just a play around deck. It's really not that competitive, but it can do some pretty big damage and put some pressure on the opponent if you know how to play it correctly. And it takes a while to learn how to play correctly. So I will try my best to teach you guys some of the strategies. All right, moving on to the grade ones. We're running four of the Knight of Quests Galahad, three Borgles, four Little Mage, uh, Little Sage Marins. Two Dream Painters. Uh, uh, two Dream Painters. Now, I put in the two Dream Painters because they can also boost the soul. So if you have some unwanted cards in your hand, you tend to get that when you're running the eight grade three lineup that I have. You tend to get some uh, useless grade threes in your hand. So if you not, if since this deck doesn't have perfect guard, you're just gonna have useless cards in your hand. So you can use Dream Painter. Excuse me to fill up your soul. And that's just another great way to uh, bring up some of these guys that need soul in order to become 9Ks, 9K boosters, and 11K attackers on their own. Like Borgle, when you have 6 in the soul, Borgle becomes a 9K booster, and he stays that way until, obviously, when your soul is not 6. So, now we're going to move on to the grade 2s. Four of the Knight of Tribune Speed Galahads, the grade 2 chain. We're running two 10k beaters, Lamorax, two gigantic dozers, they're the 11k beater when you have six in the soul, two Akanes, and we're running two Gordon, the 10k E special shield. Now you can tech out two Akanes to put in another two Gordon if you are scared that you don't have enough shield in this deck, which is fine. Um, the reason why I run the Akanes is so I can get Borgles out a lot faster. And also, if you don't want to run Dream Painter, you can run two Toy Poogles. Uh, that also works well with a can. She can get nine. Basically, what she does is she just gets the 9K boosters out a lot faster. A lot of people say that you shouldn't run a cane because she shuffles the deck, which ruins your whole setup. Well, actually, the Galahad build is not like the Tsukiyomi build. As much as people want it to be like the Tsukiyomi build, it's not. The Tsukiyomi build lets you just draw a lot so you can get down to the cards that you put in order in order to just completely devastate your opponent with just crazy damage in the game. And uh, this deck isn't made for that. This deck is just made to fill up that soul so you can get some crazy damage in on your own. Once you have Knight of Godly Speed Galahad, by the time you even get... You'll get that card, if not early game, if not mid-game... Mid I hardly ever see it come in end game where I like I need to ride it. So you'll be fine. I mean, once you get that shuffle up, it shuffles the cards, which is always a nice to have a free shuffle sometimes, and you could probably get some crits on the top or whatever. So now we're gonna go to the grade threes for Knight of Godly Speed Galahads, running 
two twin shine swordsmen, obviously not Palamedes, because Palamedes is a $15 card each. This card goes for like two bucks. So it's a 12k beater. Not bad. Uh, one Soul Saver Dragon and one Holy Disaster Dragon. Now my reasoning for running the one Soul Saver and the one Holy Disaster. Holy Disaster gets rid of cards in your hand, probably useless Galahads that you don't need, or say if you have Twin Shine in your hand, you don't need it because you already have two grade threes on the field. He becomes 15 on his own which is just excellent, uh, really, when it has a 9k booster, it's 24, or it can be 24, 23, so it's a pretty crazy card to have just attack your opponents and completely devastate them. Soul Saver Dragon is for that late game push, when you see that Galahad just isn't going to cut it on his own, so you can give a boost to two front rows and the rear guard that supports the Soul Saver and Soul Saver will swing in for 24, which is just great. And they're going to want to block that. See, because you can potentially get Galahad up to 26 when he has a 9k booster. So that's only 2k less, right? But that's only for one attack. So that one attack will probably get guarded. Now you have other cards that are going to be up in the 20ks that are going to be attacking as well. Puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. You normally want to do this for when your opponent's at like 5 damage, maybe 4 damage, hoping that you get that critical trigger or stand trigger or whatever you can possibly get. But yeah, you want to go for like that late game push is when you want to bring out Soul Saver. It's completely devastating. Uh, seriously, a lot of opponents don't see it coming because it's a budget deck. Soul Saver goes for 10 bucks, but because it's a budget deck, a lot of people don't see the Soul Saver coming. And it's just a nice card to have. It's If you damage check into it, it's all right. I mean, I only ran one. You can run two. That'll bring the deck up to 71 bucks. With one Soul Saver in it, it's a $61 deck. Without the Soul Saver, it's 51 bucks. So it's it's pretty cheap, you know. Uh, half a hundred bucks for this, just to play around with, you know. You can take out some pretty good decks with it. You're not going to be taking out any Gold Paladins unless they just, you know, don't have, you know, good enough cards. I don't know. But what happened in a situation like that, but this deck is pretty good. It can hold its own. It has a lot of shield in it. And I've had this deck hold off against Barrage of Attacks. You just have to know that in this deck, because when I was testing it out, I play really aggressively. And I can be a defensive player, but you've seen my Gold Paladin deck. It's a really aggressive deck. It, it's speed. That's what it is. So I use more of my speed mechanic in this deck, my, my own speed strategy. And you don't want to do that, and especially in a budget deck like this. You don't want to use speed. You want to be extremely conservative with your hand. You want to make sure that you have a big hand, because when your opponent starts coming in with some, with some devastating attacks, you want to make sure you can guard those. You need to know when to take damage, when not to take damage in this deck. And if you can do that, then this deck can be victorious in just about almost any situation that brings it. Now, the reason why I made a Galahad deck instead of making the Garmore deck is because I liked the Galahad. I thought the Galahad build was just interesting. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Ride Chains. You saw my Mega Colony video. That's a Ride Chain deck, but it has backups. This deck really doesn't have any backup. Once you miss this Ride Chain, it's pretty much game over. But... Drangle, you search the top five to look for a Knight of Quests in, er, in the beginning of the game. Uh, Knight of Quests, search top five, you can look for to uh, a Knight of Tribulant ride, and you can arrange the cards. Uh, put Knight of Godly Speed from that search, and you Soul Charge two. All you need is one more Soul Charge to bring the Soul to six, and it's pretty cool. This deck has a lot of Soul Charge. You have ten cards that Soul Charge it. Uh, you have the Stand Trigger, which counts as a Soul Charge, and she gives plus 3,000 power to any Royal Paladin. The Draw Trigger, that's a Soul Charge, gives plus 3,000, and then the two Dream Painters. So you have ten cards that can Soul Charge. And I guess that's about it. So if you guys want to see more budget decks, just give me a shout in the comments on what budget deck you would like to see. I'll have to scrounge up some money because right now I'm trying to make my own variant of Majesty Lord Blaster. Since I am all done with my Platina Azel deck, 
all the cards should be coming in by the end of this week. So I can't wait for that. So yeah, the next deck that is being built gradually is Majesty Lord Blaster. In October, I'm going to be opening up three of the Liberator Trial decks. So stay tuned for that. I'm not going to buy any of the extra boosters for um, Valkyrie Extra Booster or the Nova Grappler Extra Booster, the, two or the Oracle Think Tank and the Nova Grappler Extra Booster that comes out in September. I'm not buying those. Maybe I'll go to a sneak peek. I haven't decided yet. I probably will, though. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. So stay tuned for the next thing, which will probably be my Platinum Azel deck profile. And hopefully we can get some card matches, card fights in here. And uh, I guess the next thing that I'll be opening will have to be the Liberators, which comes out October 4th. Those three trial decks. And then eight of the Triumphant Return of the King of Knights, which comes out December 14th. So eight booster boxes. So I think you guys already know what I'm going to be playing. Obviously, Gold Paladins, because they're my favorite clan. And uh, Royal Paladin variant. But yeah. So if you guys have any uh, things you would like to change to this deck, leave them down in the comments below. If you guys would like to see some games with this deck, leave them down in the comments below. And yeah. So this is Joseph from My Gamers Reviews. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.